What is up, crew? Happy Wednesday Eve. Um, getting a couple of things set here. Let me know when you hop on. Smash the like button. Hit the heart button. Comment, post. Let me know that you're here. Um, Zoom didn't want to connect to Facebook again tonight. Seems like there's lots and lots of people doing Facebook Lives, and it is eating up. Facebook's bandwidth, I think. Hey, what's up, Kimberly? Enrico, what's going on, people? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, smash that like button, hit the love button, hit the love button. Let me know that you're here. Um, let me know that you can hear me. Everything's working right. We're going to wait here for just a minute and let a couple more people get on. Um, the way the algorithm works with Facebook, especially the more people that are doing Facebook lives is when you hit the like button and you hit the love button and you comment and post and say, Hey, what's up? What's up, Andrew? It shows it to more people in the group. That's kind of how this rolls. So let's do that. <clears throat> Guess they will need to fix it then. Right? For show. Sure. What's up people. All right. Let's see if we can get Sean Manaher on here. Sean, if you're out there, buddy, let me know that you're here. Hit that like button. Hit the love button. I'm going to respond to – what's up, Sean? Cool, brother. I'm going to respond to Sean's – there we go. There's some love. There's my crew. Right on. What's up, guys? All right. See how that works? Now we've got more people watching. Um, so <clears throat> for those of you who are new-ish to the crew – there's a handful of us that have um, different types of experience in the sales world, different amounts of sales experience, um, and different ways of doing things. And Sean asked me a question yesterday in the group based on, holy crap, based on um, some success that one of our friends, one of the students of, of our course had. And his question is, so Landon, in light of Steph's success, congrats, and what she is doing, what's your take then on doing cold calls, emails, or any traffic getting that is not warm or organic? Curious now. Sean, part of the reason that I wanted you on tonight was so you could kind of clarify a little bit of that. Before I jump in and try and answer it, I want to make sure that I'm reading your question right. I'm reading your question. What's up, James? What's up, brother man? I'm reading your question in that you think that I don't like cold calling, cold emailing, and any traffic that comes to you other than warm and organic. And a kid on a street bike. Um, so I kind of want to make sure that I've, what's up, Evelyn? I kind of want to make sure that I'm jumping in to answer this right to start off with. Um, Brendan, what's up? Cool. We got a handful of people rolling. Um, yeah, there's like a probably about a 10 second lag on this, Sean. I'm going to let you type a little bit of that out. Um, or the two would rather focus on organic versus cold. Okay, cool. <clears throat> For those of you who are new to this little world, <clears throat> I'm going to try and paint a very clear picture of what I think when it comes to generating leads building an audience, getting clients, as far as lead generation goes. There's two main aspects of lead generation. There's inbound, attraction marketing, warm leads, right? And there's some of these that cross over, but then the other side is like cold calling. It's like cold outreach. <clears throat> really, there's about 17 or 18 different pieces that can be in there. The question is, what do I think about the cold, what's up, Ryan? What do I think about the cold outreach aspects of generating leads? <clears throat> the short answer is, is I'm totally all good with it. And I think it should absolutely be done. And depending on what kind of business you've got, 
it's an absolute necessity where some of the confusion comes in as to like, do I like it? Do I think we shouldn't do it? All of that is because there's absolutely a right in a wrong way to do cold outreach. Um, I have three famous questions. I will come back and post my three famous questions in the comment on this thread. But basically it comes down to, it's all in the approach. I actually posted that in the group last night, kind of after thinking about this. It's all in the approach, right? If you're a business owner and you're going to cold outreach, it's all in the approach on how it's received by the people that you're taking your message to. That's one piece. The other piece is time and effort, right, on my end. And I'm kind of just jumping right into the middle of this, but I got to explain this before I can kind of lay out what I think is the right foundation to do this. You can absolutely go get a scraper tool for emails and you can scrape 100, 200, 2,000, 5,000 emails and you can send them all a generic email and you just go through and change the names or you can pay somebody to do that, right? And then when those people respond back, the idea of that first outreach is to sell them on having a conversation. If you do that and all of those people come back, let's say you send out a thousand cold emails and let's say your email's really good and it hits them really the right way. Cool, maybe you get 50 to 100 responses back. Realistically, you're probably looking at between 20 and 30, just to give you an idea. If your email's really good, what I disagree with with the cold outreach thing is the time and the effort it takes the human being to do it. And what I mean by that, Sean, is if you do a bunch of the work up front and are prepared and really pre-qualify the people that you're cold outreaching to, fucking all day long, that's how it should be done. If I'm going to cold outreach to businesses, some of you know this, the way that I go about it is, is I'll pick a city. I'll pick an industry, a vertical, a certain type of business. Yeah, smash that like button, hit the love button. We're at 13 people watching this now. Let's see if we can get over 15. That'd be rad. I'm going to pick a city. I'm going to pick a specific industry. Let's call it the age-old ads agency smash to death chiropractor. Sean, you kill it at chiropractors. But I'm going to do a city and I'm going to go with a bigger city. They've got higher income. And I'm going to go find the top 100 chiropractors in that city. And I'm going to vet them. I'm going to pre-call them based on what I would expect to begin with. Most people don't go that route. Most people don't take that step. It's like, oh, lead gen, 2,000 emails, which I think that's crap. That's just kind of my take on it. Um, cold knocking door to door, like kind of what you were doing a couple of weeks ago. Not like that. It's too much time. It's still a numbers game. Are your the way you're doing it, are you better off making a few phone calls and then going and doing what you're doing? That's exactly what I would do. That's, that's correct. For cold outreach, that's awesome. There's some super high level versions of doing that. But to answer your question, no, I totally think it's needed, it's necessary, it's a requirement if you're a business owner or if you're in sales selling a product or a service. I just think most people, A, do it the wrong way from an agenda motive stance and then from the actual knowing how to do it effectively and efficiently stance. Most people don't have any idea. I spent 15 years having to do that. I learned how to make it easy on myself and only go after the highest quality leads I could. That way I could just like totally cut out all the bullshit to begin with. So to answer your question in short, yay, we made it to 15. Hit that like button, hit that love button, post some stuff in the comments. Hey, let's see who's here. What's up Raquel? Steph, Steph, right on, cool. Hey, let me know that you're here. Post in the comments, we're at 16. See if we can make it to 20. What's up, Robert? <clears throat> so, and then we dropped a couple. Sean, let me know if I answered your question. You and I have regular conversations. You guys rock. I love all of you. 
you and I have regular conversations. If you've got specific questions in there, we can totally go over that. If you give me some specific questions, I'll answer those here. Here's how I think it should be done. It's 2017. You're watching me on a live video stream on Facebook, a totally free to the end user platform like this would have been done 20 or 30 years ago on television or even five or six, right? We've got the technology that we can cut out a bunch of the steps and we can build out platforms and profile funnels on technology as a foundation where we can then leverage some other techniques to drive traffic. One of those, what you were commenting on yesterday on, on Steph's stuff is Steph has the kind of demeanor and the kind of personality and the intelligence that in faith back a hundred years ago, right? Five, six, seven, eight months ago, she was posting some really cool, interesting stuff and she wasn't doing it, in, doing it intentionally, but because of the way she went about it and the way that she was providing value to the community, she had people reaching out to her to help them. And she positioned herself unintentionally in a manner that she was able to position herself as kind of an authority, right? So if that works, why not include that as part of your lead gen strategy, right? If you're gonna cold call, you're doing the 30 day sales challenge, if you guys like sales, go check out the 30 day sales challenge Facebook group. Sean runs it. He started it. He's, they're doing some really cool shit in there. Um, you're doing the cold calling thing, right? And from an outside perspective, the little bit that I've been able to pay attention to, you built a list of the hundred, right? Friends, family, people, you know, business owners, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to reach out to them, not to sell them, but to leverage what they've got as far as their network because everybody knows somebody you can do business with. That's not cold outreach really as the true definition of cold outreach is. That's not cold calling, right? You're communicating with people that you already know, that's your warm market, and you're expanding that warm market into their warm market for a referral or a introduction. That's fucking brilliant. I totally agree with that. I teach that. I think that's something that you should include. Now, as far as the cold calling aspect or cold emailing, how much time do you dedicate to doing that? It's a numbers game. What's going on, Moshe? It's a numbers game, right? Well, cool. So is building authority and an audience on Facebook or LinkedIn. The difference is when you cold call somebody or you cold email somebody, you're reaching that one person. Maybe sometimes asking them for a referral, whether they do or don't do business with you, you're reaching a, a few more. But when you're in social media and you're cold approaching a group and you're providing value and posting content, et cetera, et cetera, you're reaching that person and then your content's recorded so everybody can come in and see it after that. I don't know why more people don't do this right? It's a foundational thing. It's you plant it once, water it a little bit, and then you can walk away and plant another one and water it a little bit. And then those trees continue to grow. So here's kind of how I see lead gen as a whole. There's all these ways that you can plant trees on social media. You should absolutely do that. This is becoming engaged and visible and participating and providing value in Facebook groups, on threads that are going out of control, on viral content, et cetera. And there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And then there's other ways that you can do like our ACAF funnels where it's paid traffic. And then there's the cold emailing. And you should have a process that includes a bunch of these different pieces across the board. So to answer the question, I'm gonna go back and see here. The reason I suggest cold calling versus organic is because the time investment required for organic takes far longer to build. Am I right about that? I don't know, you've seen my group, right? Um, I can do, I, I understand what you're saying. Here's my question. 
if you are really good about pre-qualifying who you're going to reach out to and cold calling them, I can tell you, and this is based on a bunch of years worth of, of time and effort, if you're reaching out to actual cold, right? If you called somebody up and said, hey, this is Sean Manaher. We did X, Y, Z back two or three or four years ago on this other thing. I'm doing this. That's not a cold call, right? If you're cold calling a business you've never spoken to before and you're saying, hey, I'm Sean. I'm in the neighborhood. We do this thing, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. That's a cold call. My question to you is, is how many of those cold calls do you have to do to bring on a client? And I'm not arguing. I absolutely think you should do that. Um, I can do the cold approach through Facebook and I can identify who my ideal clients are. And I, I would imagine that I could build as good a relationship and bring on as many clients as I could on the phone. There's a couple of reasons for that. Most people don't like answering the phone. Yes, you're cold calling a business. Somebody's there to answer the phone. You and I, if you listen, we have two totally different ways of coming off. You come off, Sean, with your tone of voice, with the way you say things, I come off Landon with my tone and the way I say things. In some markets, that works to my benefit. In other markets, it doesn't. For the thing that you and I share in common that adds as an agency business, it's probably easier for you to do that. Right, now, here's what I'm saying though, is, is your, your sales process, that sales cycle, and three opted for a lunch and learn, how much time is that, right? You gotta find the businesses, you gotta pre-qualify them, you gotta call them, you gotta schedule it, then you gotta go show up. If that's your model, then great. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is, is I would opt not to do that, personally, for me. I'm not saying that anybody shouldn't do that. It's a great model. The other piece of this is you have the ability to do that. I could have the ability to do that, but doing this group thing, there's a bunch, 16 hours for three clients. Okay, so break that into two eight hour days if you were on the phone all day long cold calling. Yeah, it's about right, it's about right. I totally don't have anything against it, is what I'm trying to say. I think that everybody has a bunch of means available to them. You're taking that time to go get a client. I'm taking that time to build a process that generates many clients over a longer period of time. Yes, to be straight and answer your question, the, the creating organic engagement and all of that in the short term takes more time, but the longer term payoff is, the longer term payoff in my mind is better. Now, there's a million different ways to look at this. I did the cold calling thing for 15 years. I'm kind of fucking over it. I think there's better and easier ways for me to do it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I think if you're going to have an actual business, there's an element of cold calling and cold emailing that you absolutely ought to be doing if you want to grow a business. Cool. I'm actually watching it from the future, so I have a reverse scenario. He's about to talk about something. <laughs> right on, James. Yeah, no, but Sean, to like be totally um, to be totally clear, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think most people do it totally the wrong way. You've developed a process over a period of time having to be the sales end of your business, right? You've developed that process. If somebody was new out of the gate in the last six months doing a business, bringing on clients, they couldn't pace you, right? They couldn't pace you. If that's going to take them a period of time to really develop their conversation, to be able to bring on clients doing the cold outreach, whether it's phone, email, a combination, door knocking, whatever, there is time in the day that it doesn't make sense not to set up the warm and organic inbound lead generation, especially since the reality is, is if anybody actually sat down and said, I've got five grand, I've got this craft that I do and I do it well and I love doing it. And 
for five grand, I can build three or four inbound funnels. I can pay one person to build out several other pieces. And then I've got two or three or $4,000 to drive some paid traffic. And in the meantime, I'm becoming visible and engaging in some groups and I'm building out my profile funnels and for two hours a day, I'm cold calling and cold emailing. That's really how the fuck it should be done. So does that answer your question? Yes, Mark, it's not only about getting new clients, it's about getting quality clients, which is really where that prequal to the nth friggin' degree comes in. And nobody online is teaching this one aspect. Here's a nugget for everybody that's sat around long enough. Sean, you kind of already automatically do this because you've been through enough shitty clients. Most people don't take the time to say, eh, there was like nine red flags on that phone call. I'm going to tell that guy no. Most people just go ahead and bring that client on. Total waste of time. You're setting yourself up for a, a landmine and all of that shit. Yeah, Sean James asks a good question. I would be shocked if you're not. Yeah, shitty clients are bullshit. Exactly, Robert. James, I'm not. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, dude, that's really? I think we've actually talked about this. Part of the reason why is you didn't want to be on video and then you just went and did a 30 day Facebook live challenge. Dude, an ACAF video, seriously, it might take you an hour to set up and then you can target the exact kind of chiropractors with the videos that you've been doing with your chiropractors, like the ones where you go and you're there and it's them. Dude, you, you should so totally use that shit and create an ACAF video. Fucking do it. Yeah, exactly. I love you, Sean. You shouldn't be embarrassed. You're fucking killing it. But the, again, you are, you're Sean, right? You're, you're getting this to 12 streams of income. You've had several amazingly successful businesses up to this point. You know, you're going to do the thing by all means. I'm not arguing with you about the cold outreach thing um, to each their own. I think, and I, I do some cold outreach. Holy shit balls. I do cold calling and cold emailing and cold approaching. The cold approaching thing is really kind of like my deal. That's really kind of how I've built the influencer network that I've been building the last couple of months on Facebook. Um, I mean, I could drop some names, but I don't need to. Some of the people that are coming into our crew is because I cold approached them the right way, which really is a cold call. The difference is, is it's over social media on the internet instead of the phone. It's the only difference, right? I think it's about exactly what you said. Do what's you and do what works. Totally. And you know what? Here's the reality. Cold calling and cold emailing absolutely work for me and work really, really, really well. It's one of the things that I can do really well. Hey, we're at 17. You guys keep smashing. Ah, oh, we lost somebody. Keep smashing that like button. Let's try and get this up over 20. Let's try and get this up over 20. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know I kind of went back and forth on that, Sean. Um, I totally don't agree with you at all. My take is, is there's a bunch of people that do it the wrong way. Most of us in our inner circle, in our little club, you and me and Brendan and Mark and John, um, and there's more. James does it well. There's a bunch of us that do it the right way. And there's a bunch of people that do it the wrong way. That's really all I'm saying. Cool. What's up, Leslie? Um, it's incredible. Love you, man. Yeah, Sean's the bomb, dude. Sean's one of my I've, shit. I said this a month or so ago. Sean's here. You go, buddy. Sean, you're one of my favorite people I've met in a long time. I think you're fucking cool. I'm really glad you're hanging out in my world. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Cameron, you're all right too, buddy. Right on. If you guys have any questions about that, um, I'm thinking this next week, I'm going to do a master class that's going to be just on lead generation. I'll do like slides or a whiteboard and like lay out the different pieces that we're either using or and or building out with this and kind of show you what my stack looks like as far as the lead generation model goes. Um, let me know if you guys want to see that post it in the comments 
if we get enough people that are saying, yeah, do that, we'll schedule it for sometime next week. We'll do a 30 or 40 minute masterclass. Hey, we're at 17, 18, 18, 17, 17. And then I start doing this and we start dropping. Come on guys, 16. <laughs> All right, we'll get over 20 in the next one. Cool. You guys have a great night. I am going to go eat something. What's up, Kate? All right. I dig you guys hanging out with me doing this. This is fun as shit. I answered Sean's question on a Facebook Live video. You don't have to know me well to ask me a question in the group that I will come in and answer on a Facebook Live. Um, Rose, if you're watching this, branding is still a Facebook Live that we're going to do. I've got somebody coming up we're going to interview, and I'll tag you in it. Cool. Right on. That's funny. And then she pops up. That's rad. Ciara. Cool, cool. All right. You guys have a good one. I'm out of here. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Later.